Hi, I'm Michael Yuasa, the founder of Antarctic. Hi, I'm Varni Natarajan, technical director of Antarctic and founder of Spagliotech. Today, we're going to show you how nonprofits can utilize uh, Salesforce to manage their volunteers. And we created an organization called Food is Medicine that delivers meals and makes meals for people in need. And Barani is going to walk us through how Food is Medicine utilizes Salesforce to manage their volunteers. So uh, for the sake of this demo, we have installed two packages. One is uh, the nonprofit success pack that mainly deals with the functionality surrounding all the processes that, that are part of a nonprofit. And uh, the second package is volunteers for Salesforce that mainly deals with managing and engaging volunteers. So as part of this volunteers for Salesforce, uh, we have uh, campaigns which are mainly events. So every nonprofit has certain events that are going through like throughout the year. Even at Food is Medicine, we have a lot of food fests that happen during the year. And for each of these events, we need people, we need volunteers to support in food preparation, food distribution, and other activities. So let's start by uh, creating a, an event. So I'm going to go into campaigns, which is nothing but an event. I'm going to create a new uh, event. It's called New York Food Fest. New York Food Fest. I'm going to make it active, and uh, the date is going to be Feb 26. The start date and the end date will be Feb 27. And I'm going to save it. So now we have the campaign ready. Now, as part of this campaign, we'll have certain jobs like food preparation, food distribution. So I'm going to um, start with creating a new job for this campaign. So this is going to be uh, meal preparation. And for this job, uh, we need to have add skills that are required by the volunteer for completing this. So for food preparation, we need a pre-cook, chef, and line cook. I'm going to save and add in one more job. The second one is meal distribution. And for this, uh, we need the help of wait staff and housekeeping. Save. So we have uh, created both these jobs now. So once the jobs are created, then we have to create shifts. Shifts are nothing but instances of the uh, job with exact timings when the help is required. It may be uh, once or twice a day, um, or it may fall on like different days as well. So for meal preparation, I'm going to add a shift. So I'm going to add a volunteer shift. I'm going to select the data as Feb 26. And I want some help around 4 p.m. The duration will be for two hours for meal preparation. And the desired number of volunteers is three. So let me save it. And I'm going to add one more shift to the meal distribution job. So on the same day, February 26, the timing will be uh, somewhere around 7 p.m. Again, duration will be one hour. Desired number of volunteers too. 
So I have created two shifts now, one for meal preparation and one for meal distribution. So once this is ready, uh, we can go and find volunteers uh, who match the skills that we require for the jobs and who, who are free during weekends. Uh, before that, let's also go and create a new volunteer and see how adding a new volunteer into the system looks like. So I'm going to go into contacts and there is a new volunteer who like who is interested in food is medicine uh, so i'm going to add add him so his name is david i'm not going to add an account here so it will create a, a household account automatically and as part of this i will have to make or enter the skills for this person so volunteer status will be active and let's say he has chef skills and baking skills and he's available on weekends see so this is how we we had a new volunteer into the system with the required skills we also have jobs and events with the required skills so we can now match the volunteers who are willing to help against the the jobs and chips that are available so there is a find volunteers functionality which is pretty helpful for it i'm going to search for all active volunteers who are available on weekends with chef skills so now it also has pulled up david poon whom we have added recently but there are other volunteers as well who has the skills so i'm going to select david poon and i'm going to add him to a campaign the so new york food fest and assign the job of meal distribution and I have to select the shift. So, wait, assign meal preparation, sorry. And the shift will be at the, the 4 p.m. one on that day. The status will be confirmed. So now this volunteer has been assigned to this job worship. So there is another functionality uh, called the shift calendar where the administrator can see all the available shifts on all the available jobs across all the events. So this is the calendar for February where we can see uh, there is some event happening during every weekend. Then there is some some events in March as well. So this, this gives a very good idea on when the event is happening. And also if you, if you hover over the events, then we will know for those jobs, how many are required, how many are confirmed. So now what we have done is we have, we have matched the volunteers against the events that are going to happen. Now, let's say once this event is completed, then we'll have to assign the, the, the credit hours to the volunteers who worked on that. So now I'm going to uh, go to the contacts, select David Boom, who has helped us. I'm going to go to, so like under his campaign history, we can see that he's involved with the New York Food Fest campaign and Against volunteer hours, we know that this person is confirmed for this job. So I'm, I'm going to mark this job as complete. So the status will be completed and the hours worked will be two. See. So now these two hours will get credited to David. So there is also a mass edit functionality where we can we can assign hours to all the people who worked uh, for an event. Then uh, 
once this is all done, then we have reports and dashboards that give a very good idea on, on all the data that is involved. So there are some pre-made reports like the active volunteers, the top volunteers by recent hours who have worked recently. Then we have the available voltage jobs. So I'm going to click on available voltage jobs. So this gives all the available events that are happening in the near future and then the, the jobs that are there and the, the completed volunteer hours if it's done. So this gives a, a very high level overview and uh, based on the reports, dashboards can also be prepared to give a picturesque view. So there is a dashboard called volunteers dashboard, which is pre-made. So this again shows all the information in, uh, in, in charts and tables. And I can refresh this so that the latest data gets updated here. So we know the total volunteer hours that has gone in, then the volunteer leaderboard who has contributed the most. So there are like a few more charts that are helpful for the top management. This, this dashboard can be made as the, as the homepage as well, so that whoever lands into this application will see this first and then they'll move on from there. So dashboards and reports are completely customizable in the sense we can, we can bring in whatever data we want to see in the form that we, we, we can, or we, we wanted it. So with this, I, I come to the end of the demo and over to Michael. Thanks, Barani. Um, and yeah, one of the big uh, benefits of using Salesforce is uh, nonprofit can manage both their volunteers and their donors both within the same database and create seamless communication to, um, to their constituents, as opposed to having the volunteers separate and the, uh, and the donors separate and not knowing if a donor is a volunteer and a volunteer is a donor. Uh, Ronnie, do you wanna walk us through some of the uh, services that we can offer? Yes, sure. So we specialize in uh, Salesforce for nonprofits. So we help the nonprofit in providing a tailor-made solution in Salesforce that, that fits according to their needs and their processes. So we start from migrating existing applications from an, another application into Salesforce, preparing custom-made objects and uh, preparing um, customized reports and dashboards, email templates, processes, workflows, and at the end, we also give user training and give a smooth transition so that your R can start working with Salesforce from day one. Awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you for watching the video. If you have any comments or questions, uh, please feel free to leave them below. And we'll also leave our emails that you could reach out to for any potential projects. Thanks. Thank you.